guys, it's Kicter. This is my girlfriend Stitch, and welcome to Danme Debates. Today we have some wonderful questions that were asked by my YouTube members. Some of these questions are: Would Shilian love Hua Chung as a worm? What MXTX character is the quickest to get cancelled? Is Hushuan justified in his revenge? Could Beef Leaf ever reconcile? Who has the most restraint, Chu Wenning or Lam Wanji? And how did Hua Chung become the best top? And we will also be getting questions from our members during this live stream. So <laughs> to start off, <laughs> would Shilian love Hua Chung as a worm? So I need a clarifying question here. Does Shilian know Hua Chung is the worm? That's a great question. I would say yes. Like, did he like turn into a worm or does he just know that this is a worm named Hua Chung? He's this particular worm. <laughs> for the sake of this question, I think Hua Chung's true form, because Hua Chung has all these hangups about mm. what he actually looks like, his true form is a worm. Oh, okay. Would you love me if I was a worm? If deep down in my heart, I was a worm. Okay. Because actually, I am a worm. Okay. I think that makes sense. That answers some of my conceptual questions. Okay. Um, in short, yes, I do. Okay. I think that that is possibility is made very clear early on in their relationship um when she, <laughs> when Chilean <laughs> shut up <laughs> shut up <laughs> you're messing me up when Chilean first discovers um in canon when um he discovers that Hua Chung his true form is not Sun Lung, that he is actually the ghost king Hua Chung. They have a very intimate discussion in bed in Puchi Shrine where Sun Lung asks, you know, what if my true form is that of a monster, like a worm? Is a worm a monster? Depending on the size of the worm, I could be a monster. Uh, Chi Rong Chi Dong in the chat just said Hua Chung as the Alaskan bullworm. Exactly. Very <laughs> valid monster. <laughs> But he asked Shilian, would we still be friends? And Shilian makes it very clear that um, what matters in friends or perhaps lovers is just whether or not you get along and not necessarily what you look like or even what species you are. So I, th I do think that if Hua Chung's true form was that of a worm, they would they would be totally fine um and actually i have some additional points to make that i really think that a worm specifically would be a good match for shilian okay oh okay yes um <laughs> i think i think shilian is kind of a bug lover when he first sees hua chung's butterflies um he thinks that they're very cute and intelligent and he likes them when all the other heavenly officials are like terrified of them he's like i think they're great Okay. And like, okay. imagine the closeness between a caterpillar or a worm to a butterfly. It's, it really fits. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the, here's the big kicker. He basically hangs out with a worm already. Like Roy, what is Roy a but a worm? Oh my god. He's just a wiggly little worm guy, and so he's really used to like interacting and engaging with and being friends with a worm-like creature. Like he would let. Hua Chung hang out on his body all the time as a worm. We just wrap him around his wrist and roll out. <laughs> the Roy A is already essentially a worm. Uh, discourse is it's this is this is groundbreaking stuff, honestly. Yeah. Wow. That's that is a great point. Thank you. Does that conclude your point? That concludes my argument. Okay. I would have to agree with you. Um, because I think Shilian would love Hua Chung as a worm because I think throughout the events of the novel, he realizes Hua Chung does have many forms. Mm -hmm. And like one of those forms was a little ghost flame. And like even as a little ghost flame, he's still Hua Chung. Like he's still so lovable. So obviously he would still be that lovable as a worm. And I put in this little aside is that as me, myself, as someone who does love someone unconditionally, <laughs> I think Shilian would love Hua Chung unconditionally. If one day he was like, honey, I am a worm. <laughs> I've been keeping the secret for 817 years. <laughs> I, I do think Shilian would be okay with it. From your personal experience of loving someone so much. Yeah. Are you hearing this? <laughs> <laughs> like... It's true. It's true. Um, I do think that Shailian would prefer Hua Chung as a human, though. Perhaps, yeah. like, selfishly a little bit. And it might be kind of bad to be like, oh, man, like, that's his true self. I'm fucking a worm. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
but yes, I, I also agree with you. I do think Shilam would be interested in worm culture. Yes. And he could learn a lot from Worm Chung, as the chat has so lovingly named him. <laughs> <laughs> what matters is you and not the state of you. Not whether or not you're a very cute little worm. If he was not Hua Chung, if he was just a worm, I do think they could fall in love. I think Shilan is at the point in his life where he would take wormship over what the rest of the world has ever offered him. One very devoted worm, I think, would still mean everything to Shilian. If he was given the given the chance to meet Worm Chung, I, I do agree. I've thought about this very deeply over the last 45 minutes I was cramming for this podcast mm-hmm. issue video. <laughs> and I can see it. You know, again, it's the Roye principle. He's already been hanging out with Roye for like 800 years. Imagine a worm that liked him instead of boobies. Wait, oh, yes, because yeah, Roye likes Roye boobies. likes, yes. likes boobies. That's really his only flaw. That's true. Okay, now, okay. <laughs> the chat is getting hung up on something. The chat is getting a little hung up on as friends, yes, but lovers? Listen, I wouldn't put it past Hua Chung to figure it out. If anyone could figure it out, it would be Hua Chung. And that's all I'm going to say. Your imaginations. Look, <laughs> he could still... I, I think a worm with all of the skills and talents that Hua Chung has as a person, for example, sculpting, he could craft a worm mecha, <laughs> like a human-shaped <laughs> mecha to, <laughs> to pilot for lover activities. You <laughs> did so worm chung would make a prosthetic human mecha body so he could fuck shillian better and to hold him gently in his sleep i'm not a crass person (laughs) i was like just imagine a worm telling you to take your clothes off (laughs) no i am like galaxy brain okay i've thought like three dimensions ahead of you on this one I just love the vision of him piloting the mecha. It's like a little booger hanging out of the mecha's nose. Stop. (laughs) Hey, Gaga. Does it feel good, Gaga? Someone walks in on him, like, making this, and they're like, oh, he's sculpting. uh, Like, wow, this is so incredible. It's like, yeah, I'm sculpting this to f*** Gaga with. (laughs) Imagining worm sex between Hualien is more traumatizing than book four. Oh no, someone says there is fan fiction about it somewhere. Well, if there wasn't, after today, there may be. Oh, another interesting question is what if the worm couldn't talk? Listen, okay. he would use his little worm body to like wiggle around and like write in the dust, but you wouldn't be able to tell that he's writing anything because his handwriting's so bad. Oh my god. It takes him like maybe like hours to like write out I love you, Gaga, in the dirt, but you can't really read it. That That's- would pose some problems, I think, but it's not not unsolvable that's so sad would Shilian make a little dirt house for hua chung what is poochie shrine but a little worm house as is <laughs> it already is a little worm house that's so funny. dirt floor he'd fit right in his home was made for a worm lover next question which don may character would be the quickest to get canceled online in 2023 this is a wonderful question <laughs> It sure is. I want to start this with a little hot take. Oh, and I, this is perfect. The chat is falling right into the trap. Everyone's saying Chi Rong. Chi Rong is a cannibal. Chi Rong says slurs. <laughs> Chi Rong is just an all around terrible person that does deserve to get canceled. However, would Chi Rong ever be caught dead making an apology video? Ah, uh, no, he would not. No, he would not. I think that Chi Rong is so unabashed in his terrible ways that he would gain a fan base of also other terrible people and it's like yeah people would be trying to cancel him but he like would not let himself be canceled whereas like a normal person if they were to get canceled they feel terrible they make an apology video they try to change their ways and then it affects their career (laughs) chi rong would be like you all press is good press for Chi Rong, yes. I think. Mm-hmm. That being said, <laughs> I think the quickest to actually get canceled, Chilean. So this is like a modern AU, okay? Someone would dig up his tweets or an old account and be like, we've used the Wayback Machine. Oh my God. And we saw that you 
um, tweeted something about genocide. <laughs> I think that would, you know, with Chilean's terrible luck, that would just be the screenshot about genocide next to his face all over BuzzFeed. Okay. However, very quickly, everyone who ever made a derogatory tweet about Chilean trying to cancel him would mysteriously disappear. <laughs> Hua Chung would just go and murder anybody that dares say anything bad about Chilean on the internet. He kind of did with like the heavenly officials. Like, exactly. Just burning down all their temples. He's just like d- d- hacking into their accounts, deleting them. <laughs> Everyone's Twitter accounts just going down. Instead of <laughs> he's duetting everyone on TikTok <laughs> and just destroying them. <laughs> For me, I was thinking between Wei Wuxian and Qilian. The whole like plot of Modao Zushi is like the world needs like a scapegoat to blame everything yeah. on. So you know what? Wei Wuxian would be canceled in the media, but what would he do? Like what, what on the internet in like a modern way? What does he get canceled for? I think Wei Wuxian is like upfront into some sketchy stuff. So like he's like into all sorts of like satanic blood sacrifice stuff. Like, like Wei Wuxian, he's making his demonic cultivation shit in the modern AU. But then what if, like, some someone, like, comes after his family? Like, he gets swatted <laughs> and Yanli dies. <laughs> Do we really re- need to relive that? <laughs> Until. Until. Jin Guanyao gets canceled and everyone forgets about yes. Wei Wuxian. <laughs> he makes a new account and comes right back up after, right after <laughs> Jin Guanyao gets canceled. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's just like a cottagecore account where he's like, life with my husband. <laughs> Who has more restraint, Chu Wanning or Lam Wanji? So to set up my argument, I think that the source of their restraint comes from two very different places. For Long Wanji, it comes from his upbringing. He's a rule follower. He really believes in the Lan sex rules and follows them with his whole heart. Like that is like a core value of his. Um, he Being a fuddy-duddy is his whole personality, especially growing up. Um, so his restraint comes from really believing in a certain set of ideals. And so when Wei Wuxian challenges those, he's really stuck in his ways or trying not to show any conflict or um, anything that would kind of um, impact his sense of self. Chu Wanin, however, his restraint comes, I think, from a sense of guilt and this idea that he is unlovable and undeserving of love, which is so much sadder, but also a little bit more fragile. Mm-hmm. So I lean towards uh, Chu Wanin as having less restraint because for Long Wanji, his restraint comes from more of a neutral or even somewhat positive place of like having a very strong sense of identity. His restraint kicks in when like Wei Wuxian is annoying him and he's horny but annoyed and pushing that away. Um, Chu Wanin pushes people away because he thinks that he is a cold, terrible person who should just die alone. I, I think the point that I also got kind of hung up on about Chu Wanning is like the beginning of book two of Arha and the English translation is literally just this super long monologue of Chu Wanning just being like, I will never open my heart ever because it would be so painful to experience rejection and loss. And I just don't want to experience that. I will not ever find love, even though I secretly want it. However, the reason why I, I personally felt so much stronger about Chu Wanning having more restraint than Lam Wanji mm-hmm. may be because we do get to see inside his head. Uh. So although lots of people in the chat are pointing out like it's Chu Wanning because we see Lam Wanji break his restraint mm-hmm. often in more like steamier scenes, like when he kissed Wei Wuxian against a tree. However, Chu Anning is not a top. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, there's the rub. (laughs) So I wonder if you were to really analyze this, if Chu Anning's restraint does slip in a lesser obvious way because he is a bottom in what he's okay Mm. with happening to him, Mm. if that makes sense. Because you think of restraint, oh, breaking out of your restraint means like, oh, I got to push him against a tree. I'm going to ravish him. I'm going to fuck him 10 times in the bushes. But Chu Anning is the, is the bottom. You're right. So his is more like, I'll let this happen. I'll let this slide <laughs> secretly. So it's like, how or, I'll let myself 
feel this way a mm-hmm. little bit. But another thing I will add, though, is that Chu Anning also feels a deep disturbance about his love for Moran because he's like, I'm his teacher, he's younger than me. While he was in the student-teacher relationship, he didn't allow himself to ever act or show his feelings towards Moran. But <laughs> did he let stuff happen in a bottomy way? <laughs> is all I'm saying to think about. <laughs> he didn't, He maybe he didn't initiate a lot. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of like maybe letting some things in. <laughs> um, not like that. <laughs> some things emotionally. Next question is, is He Xuan's revenge justified? That's a great question just for society. Like, is revenge okay? Like, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. But do you believe that? <laughs> The chat is coming in. Yes, yes, it was. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so, but this the question itself is such an interesting one because um, it's whether something is justified can mean many things. Like, it's like, would I personally agree with this? Like, that's a whole other question. Um, so I'm just going to set aside my personal qualms about murder aside and just think about it in the context of like the world of the characters and also the story of TGCF. I think TGCF has um, a lot of different stories about revenge and justice, just exploring the different ways in which mortals and gods and ghosts have all been wronged in various ways and the various ways in which they seek revenge. I think that that's a huge part of kind of exploring the world and the grayness of different types of people. Just a quick rundown of everything that happened to Hushwen during his mortal life. He was born into poverty. He was denied a career as a scholar because he didn't bribe the official at the exams. His little sister and fiance were forced to be concubines. They both died as a result of that. And when he went to go save them, he was thrown into jail for two years, almost died of starvation. He didn't die, but his mother did die while he was in prison. So he abandoned all of his dreams to become a merchant. He was so good at that job that everyone else ganged up on him, took everything he had, left him in extreme debt. And as a result of all of that, he ended up going on a murderous rampage and killed every single person who ever wronged him. So there's this first layer of this revenge story. Um, But in the context of the story, this isn't seen as a bad thing. All of the other villagers are like, those guys were all bullies. We hated those guys. They were universally bad guys. And you only killed those guys. You didn't harm anyone indiscriminately. So we appreciate you. And we're gonna create a little festival for you because he died in the process of doing that and thus became a ghost. So his first act of revenge isn't construed in a negative way. So I think it, we have a solid foundation for believing that Hushwen isn't somebody who takes revenge carelessly or in a way that is useless. It had like a pretty efficient way of mm-hmm. going about it and he was very committed to it. Um, and it took a lot for him to get to that point. So I feel like I trust Hushwen as a person, at least as he was as a mortal person, for someone who sh- can commit revenge mm-hmm. carefully. But what about his revenge on Shiwudu? Was Shiwudu justified in taking H- Hushwen's fate? No. So we have, okay, here's a good cause for revenge in the first place. And ultimately, Hushwen, while being disguised as a heavenly official, was known for doing a very good job, being generally well liked and efficient and hard worker and as a ghost king we don't have any like negative feedback on him there it seems like even in two different roles he's still consistently being like a good person fulfilling a lot of responsibility and not indiscriminately harming people his mm-hmm. revenge from start to finish was only directed at shi wudu even if he did involve um shi ching um naturally because of his involvement in the situation to begin with um he only ever harmed Shiwudu, and even when he was given... That's not true. Where's the Earth Master? <laughs> okay, fair enough. I forgot about him. He's fine. <laughs> don't worry about him. <laughs> don't, worry about, don't worry about the Earth Master. Okay. Um, yeah, I forgot about that. Okay, so my argument isn't as solid as it is originally. But um, ultimately, he had the choice to harm Xu Qingchuan, and he chose not to. I mean, kill him. We're gonna say kill him. He had the choice to kill Xu Qingchuan as well, and he didn't. He let him live his life, and seems relatively willing by the end of the book to let him go on living a new life and not f***ing with him. Um, like, after sh- killing Shi Wudu, he just got that off of his chest, and he was kind of willing to move on. I guess that's a good point. There is a very moral degree to the word 
justified. And I guess pretty early on, we agreed that revenge in the context of Danmei stories is justified. Mm -hmm. Justified, yes. But was it the best thing for his own mental health? Maybe not. <laughs> yeah. And on that note, the main story um, of TGCF with Xi Lian, like it's for him, it's not a revenge story. And I think um, his journey and choosing better things than revenge, I think, is kind of the bigger point of, you know, even whether or not revenge is justified, it's usually not the most constructive thing you can do. <laughs> good point. Very good point. So the next question is, do you think He Xuan and Xi Qing Xuan could reconcile? I think more unlikely and fucked up things have happened in TGCF where I wouldn't like write it out as impossible. Mm -hmm. If you have hundreds and hundreds of years at your disposal, then yes. If you have one lifetime, like a normal amount of years, maybe not. <laughs> the chat is screaming no. We don't have beef leaf supporters, or are we doing beef leaf supporters with like a sense of rationality? Like, yes, I like it, but it's not actually going to happen. I would like to look at this in, in a serious way and not like a delusional mm -hmm. beef leaf shipper way. I truly think if they wanted to, they could because of time. Like literally cut to that gif that's like, some people say that time heals all wounds. If some worldly event or mission like brought them back together and they had to work together who knows you know Chi ching chen loses his godhood and stuff like that in this novel in this world it's like nothing really seems finite and mm. so i think looking at it from a like nihilistic perspective of nope hushwen's just like fucking depressed and Chi ching chen is gonna die a human i feel like that is not the end to the story mm. because if it was we would have seen the death and something finite, I guess. Right. But since we don't, I think the interpretation that anything could happen is there. And I think they did share a genuine bond based on the fact that Hushwen didn't murder him <laughs> and gave him back his fan, mm -hmm. which are two emotionally charged things. That he did not have to do, even just to be kind. Mm -hmm. The fact that he gave him back his fan right. is, like, the golden ticket to, like, I think there is a chance here. And I also think, while Xi Qingxuan is traumatized that his brother was killed, if he learned and understood what Shi Wudu did to He Xuan, like, literally, if it was, like, listed out to him, and then... Also, a lot of time passed. I could see him like forgiving and understanding and being with Hushwen. Do you think them being both alive at the end of the story with that kind of open endedness is like intentional or that it adds like something to the story that wouldn't be there if like one or both of them were dead? I think so. MXTX is not afraid to kill characters yeah. and show that there is like finite death for some characters. For example, like Jing Guan Yao and Ni Hui Sun getting locked in the coffin at the end. Mm -hmm. She wanted you to know there's this 100 years where they're in the coffin, like she said that. What happens after that, you don't know. But she has not said anything, and there's no epilogue about Shi Ching Xuan and, and He Xuan. And so I don't think they were meant to die or meant to be seen as unhappy. At the end of the book, there's a banquet, and you see they're both there. I don't think MXTX like, shipped them at all. But if, if we were to say realistically if they could be friends again, or if in the future their friendship could turn romantic, because who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I think it could happen. Giving back the fan is definitely as big, if not even a bigger gesture to sparing his life, mm -hmm. because that does show a sort of reconciliation in process in terms of when we talked about Hushwen, like, is he ready to process anything or move on from anything after committing his revenge. I think that's a sign that saying that his revenge was helpful in a way because him giving back the fan, you know, shows that he's able to move on a little bit from where he was when he killed Shi Wudu. Yes, I like, agree. I think that is a, a freaking integral, integral, integral moment. Like, Shi Wudu had to die for him to reach that point, at least 
you know, there may have been other options, but it did show that there was some sort of outcome to that instead of just being stuck in that moment. That's a good point. CSD said, I would say it's just respect, which is, I think, a, like, yeah. yeah, just doing it purely out of respect, like out of respect. I'm not going to spit on your grave. <laughs> I, I could see that. Spots of Violet says, what is reconciliation? Xi Qingxuan probably knows He Xuan was justified and holds nothing against him. But drinking coffee with the guy who ripped <laughs> off your brother's head in front of you, that is a very good point. And that's where I think over time, perhaps, <laughs> maybe the memory gets a little blurred. <laughs> I think you could double down on like, there's no way he would ever allow Hushwen in his house after what he did to mm -hmm. his family. But in a not angry or resentful way, just be like, there's no room for you in my life. Mm -hmm sort of way. Like, I forgive you, but I don't want to see you again. We it's can't like, be friends again. Yeah, I get it. But you stay on that side of the of the world and I'll stay on this side. <laughs> you stay on that side of the bed. <laughs> I wonder if Hushwen could be, could at least say, I'm sorry I did it in front of you. <laughs> oh, Spots of Violet. I really like this response. I think giving back the fan was the end of their story. Xi Qingxuan knows what happened isn't Hushwen's fault and Hushwen knows it wasn't Xi Qingxuan's fault. You know, as far as ends go, even if there's a certain amount of openness to it because they're just both alive and we don't know, mm -hmm. I think Spots of Violet is totally right that MXTX very well could have meant that as their end of their story. And if that is the end for them, I wouldn't be mad. I think that that is better than what it could have been easily. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How did Hua Chung become the best top? As stated by MXTX herself, Hua Chung is the best top out of all of her characters. Canonly a great lover. How did it happen? I know exactly how it happened. Oh God, <laughs> do tell. Process of elimination. I think the other two MXTF tops are so bad in comparison that Hua Chong by default is the winner. Now, Long Wenji, a little debatable. He's not the worst, not by, not even close to the worst, okay? He's just a little bit rough and a little bit insatiable. The whole everyday thing. Won't give away Wishin's acid break. Wu Bingha, I think Canon Lee is like, I think all Scum Villain fans can love and appreciate him for being terrible in bed, Canon Lee. So that just leaves Hua Chung, who, as we know, is very, very gentle and playful and respectful and would probably take things at a little slower pace. He's had 800 years to kind of study up. Uh, I don't know how prepared he would actually be. I don't know if he really, I feel, I feel like it would, for him, it'd be like, I didn't think I'd get this far sort of situation. <laughs> but I do think that he wouldn't fumble the ball on that one. <laughs> okay. But okay. even if he sucked, like he has plenty of room to suck before he'd be like anything less than first place. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, one point that you said is, is my main point. And one thing that Hua Chung has more than anyone is patience. Yes. <laughs> And I would say, as a lover, especially with Xilian being his partner, that having patience is probably what makes their sex life so good. Because if Xilian was with someone with Lam Wan Ji's insatiable roughness, that would be fine. He obviously wants it from the um, ghost rut scene, you know? Yeah. He's like, he loves feeling desired and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But even then, nothing like crazy happened. There was no like... So thank you so much to all of my YouTube members. And if you guys would like to join my YouTube membership, you can go to my channel and click join to learn more. Spots of Violet said, because he would never do anything strange without being asked for it. But if he totally would, <laughs> that is, that's an incredible point. That's so funny. I love that. One day Shillian's just like, yeah, I've got this hankering. <laughs> hankering. <laughs> what if you were a worm in a mecha suit? Stop! Stop!